Out of all the 3D printing manufacturers we've covered on this channel, none of them have gotten more screen time than Creality. From tutorials and upgrades to 3D printer reviews, as of right now, there are over 50 videos on this channel that are dedicated in one way, shape, or form to a Creality 3D printer. Now, my first experience with Creality was with the Ender 3. I missed out on the whole CR10 uh, era, if you will, and so when Creality announced the Ender 3, I was so excited to have a small and really affordable desktop 3D printer, so I placed my pre-order and was absolutely blown away by this sub $200 3D printer that really worked out of the box and blew away all the other machines I had used up until that point. There is no denying the fact that if you look around at the low cost budget 3D printers that are on the market today, many of them were either heavily influenced by the Ender 3 or one of Creality's printers, or in some instances are even blatant copies of some of their machines. Over the years, Creality has released a ton of 3D printers, and that's not an exaggeration. If you go back and look, they really have released an insane amount of machines and revisions of revisions of revisions. And some of these 3D printers have gained immense popularity while other ones were sort of released and just either forgotten about or didn't get much attention. And although Creality has certainly focused primarily on the FDM space, and that's where they get their roots from, over the last couple of years, they have started to push into the resin space. And up until just recently, I hadn't gotten a chance to play around with any of their resin printers, and all I had seen were either other creators' videos online or maybe some different articles that I had read. A couple of months ago, Creality reached out to me asking if I wanted to test out their Hallet 1, which is their latest brand new 3D printer to the market. And having been a huge fan of their printers, their FDM printers for some time, I was really excited to see what their resin printers were all about. And so over the last couple of weeks, I've been playing around with the Hallet 1, putting it through its paces, doing a bit of printing and playing around with the machine. And so in today's video, we are going to cover the Hallet 1. We'll go over the printer specs. We'll go over what setup and calibration look like. Of course, I'll show you guys what print quality looks like off this machine. And then I will give you guys my final opinion and conclusion on this machine. There is an absolute ton to cover, so without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Massive thanks to Thanks for sponsoring today's video. With over 2 million index models in their database and growing regularly, Thanks finds the exact model that you're looking for. Thanks has some pretty unique features, like the ability to perform a geometric search or the recently added AR mode that I love. I'm a very visual person, and having the ability to place a 3D model in your space before actually printing it for reference can be quite useful. Also, it's a lot of fun and can make for some great photos. There are also great collaboration functionality baked right in, like the ability to create a private team for working on projects where you can keep track of things like different model versions as well as revisions. You also have the ability to follow a user's project, which is great for any that are actively being updated. Things has been developing new features for their site constantly, and I'm really looking forward to seeing this platform continue to expand. Links will be in the description so that you can find out more and check out things for yourself. Kicking it off, let's first run through the specs of the Hallet 1. The Hallet 1 is an MSLA resin printer with a build volume of 127 by 80 by 160 millimeters. It features a 6 inch 2K monochrome screen, which will give you an XY resolution of roughly 50 microns. Although monochrome screens have certainly become a standard and I think any 3D printing manufacturer releasing a printer without one is a bit silly at this point, I do want to state just how much I love monochrome screens for their ability to have a much longer lifespan as well as their ability to print much quicker. With standard resins on a monochrome screen, you should be able to print each layer of let's say 50 microns at roughly 2 or 3 seconds. The build plate on the Hallet 1 has a slant on the top to keep resin from building up. It rides up and down on a single lead screw and a linear rail. The vat is plastic, which I personally don't mind, and has four markings so that you can see the resin level. I did find out, looking at the manual, that there is an actual numeric value for each of the four levels in the vat, so if you look at the manual, you can easily see you know, how much resin is in the vat to ensure you've got enough for the specific job that you're trying to print. There is a built-in carbon filter that I am a huge fan of, which should help with odors caused by some resins. On the front of the printer, there is a massive 5-inch touchscreen that is without a doubt the best interface I've seen on a resin printer so far. It's very bright and crisp, which makes interfacing with the printer an enjoyable experience. On the front of the printer, there is a full-size USB port for a flash drive, as well as a USB-AB cable port, which is not something I'm used to seeing on resin printers. 
Other than that, there are vents on both sides and the back of the printer has a power input as well as a power switch. Definitely a small detail, but I did notice that on the Hallett 1, the power supply is integrated inside of the printer, unlike most resin printers I've reviewed that have a external power supply brick. Internally, the Hallett 1 has a 32-bit Creality branded board with an M4 processor and integrated Wi-Fi. They also state that they have a unique light technology that allows for high precision and uniformity in the UV distribution. To be perfectly honest with you, I reviewed quite a few resin 3D printers claiming that they've got some sort of uniqueness to their UV light source, and I have never had an issue with the UV light source on any of the resin printers I've used, so I doubt this is something that will actually be reflectable in your printing. The Hallett 1 showed up packaged very nicely and was encased in a thick foam. The acrylic top was also wrapped independently, so that way if there was any sort of vibrations, it would prevent scratching on that clear acrylic case. There was no resin included with the printer, but that has sort of become a standard with these small machines. The Hallett 1 did come with a user manual booklet, as well as a PDF on the flash drive, and even a video to get you up and running, so definitely a thumbs up for that. Setup was similar to any resin printer, which consisted of removing screen protectors, attaching the build plate, and securing the vat. When I got to the point where I would normally loosen the build plate to go ahead and level it against the LCD screen, I saw a little note on the bottom of the user manual saying that the bed was actually factory calibrated or factory leveled. And it did say that if it needed to be uh, re-leveled due to transit that you could and showed you how to do that. But I didn't really know how to know whether it had been uh, lodged or dislodged during transit. So I decided, hey, if they say they factory leveled it, let's go ahead and give it a run and see what happens. With that being said, I do want to state that I do not recommend doing that because the only way you would know if the build plate was not leveled correctly would likely be when it is crashing into the LCD screen, which is the most fragile part of this printer. So in hindsight, I definitely should have just gone ahead and leveled it to be safe, but it does seem a little bit silly that in the instructions it said that it was leveled with the other excerpts saying that you might need to re-level if it was dislodged in shipping with there not really being an easy way to check that. Once the vat was secured, I grabbed an open bottle of Soraya Tech Smoky Black Fast Resin that I've had laying around for a while. I had just enough to top off the vat before plugging in the flash drive, finding out that there was a test file that was ready to rock and roll, so I hit print. A few hours later, I came back to see the build plate hovering in the air with four blocks, one on each of the corners of the printer and a block in the center that also had the entire alphabet on it and the numbers zero through nine on it. I looked at it and thought this was a very, very strange test print, but I was at least happy to see that it had completed successfully and that the printer was working like it was supposed to. Creality also sent out their wash and cure station with the printer, so I filled it with IPA and scraped the parts into the tub. To say that the parts were a little bit stuck would be one hell of an understatement, and it took a ton of force to pry those squares off of the build plate and into the wash and cure station. Actually, on nearly all of the four corners, it broke a piece of the prints. The wash and cure station did do a fantastic job of cleaning the parts as well as curing the parts. But again, with resin 3D printing, you rarely ever want to print with such a solid flat piece against the build plate because of this exact reason. Normally you would use like a raft or something like that on an angle to help you get it off, which just contributes back to my theory of this is a very strange test print. But again, other than me damaging them with the spatula, removing them, the tops of the squares were very crisp, very sharp, and all the letters and numbers on the center piece also looked great. Seeing that the printer was at least working correctly, I was excited and I was ready to slice up some files of my own. So I headed over to my computer, and that's where things got really interesting. On the flash drive, there was both a Mac and Windows version of the Creality Slicer. So I tried to install the Mac version on my M1 Mac Mini with no luck, it just threw an error. Thinking it could be related to the actual M1 chip, I also tried it on my Intel-based MacBook and got the exact same error. After doing a bit of searching online and not being able to find a Mac version hosted on their website, I decided to bust out the Windows laptop and install the Windows version of the Creality Slicer, which did install successfully. Opening up the software, I was very surprised to not see any place to enter things like resin profiles or settings. The Hallett 1 has a menu built into the printer, which allows you to adjust burn-in layers and layer times, which is not something that I've seen before. I'm not sure whether I like this more or less than doing it from the computer like I'm used to, but it's definitely something that is unique. For the first print, I decided to go with the Catalyst from Chaos Cortec. I remember seeing them model this some time ago and thought it would look great in this black resin. So I did the usual, which is scale the model, position the model, hollow the model, and add holes, and finally supports. 
The Creality software did do all of these tasks, but they were quite limited compared to Chit2Box and Lychee Slicer, and I could definitely tell the performance was not as tuned. I had connected the Hallett 1 to my local Wi-Fi, and when I sliced up the file, I saw there was an option to print over Wi-Fi, and it just required the printer's IP. So I went over to the printer to see if I could find the IP anywhere on there. I checked every single menu three different times with no luck. So I went ahead and saved the file to the flash drive and plugged it into the printer. And one thing I noticed that I actually did really like was that when you plug a file into the printer on the flash drive, there's actually enough memory on this printer to hold one file, and that is the current file you are printing. So when you select the file on your flash drive, it'll actually copy it over to the local storage on the printer, which is rad because afterwards you can pull out the flash drive and you don't have to worry about bumping the flash drive or maybe something going wrong with the flash drive when you're printing out the file. So once the file was copied over, I went ahead and hit print. I stepped away for some hours and came back to a bend that was hovering in the air, still printing, but there was absolutely nothing on the plate. So I stopped the print, I put some gloves on and I checked inside the vat and found that the raft or the bottom of this print was stuck to the uh, inside of the vat. So I went ahead and killed the print, removed the vat, got the part that was stuck out of the vat and I went ahead and leveled the bed, which you know, hindsight, I said that I probably should have just done initially. Once I had the bed leveled, I put the VAT back on and hit print again on the exact same file. And I let it print for probably about an hour and a half and figured it would be a good time to go ahead and check to see whether this print was actually succeeding before I waited more hours to find out that maybe it had failed. So I went ahead and hit pause on the printer and was shocked to see that when you hit pause on this printer, it definitely pauses the print, but the bed stays completely stationary. It doesn't lift up like every other printer I've ever used. It just stays wherever it's currently at. So in this instance, it did nothing for me and I couldn't actually tell whether my part was failing or whether it was printing successfully. Disappointed with this, I did go ahead and hit resume and step away from the printer for a couple of hours to return to the printer and see that the bed was once again floating above the vat, still printing, but there was nothing on the build plate. At this point, I was a little bit frustrated. I've done quite a bit of resin 3D printing and having especially the successful initial test print, I went ahead and turned my attention now to the Creality Slicer. Looking at my sliced file in the Creality software, I was easily able to see what the issue was. When I had added supports and hit slice, it actually raised the print away from the raft and left a gap between where the raft ends and where the supports begin. And I tried to replicate this and every time with every model that I imported, if I added supports and hit slice, it would lift it up and it would leave that gap in between where the raft was and the supports were. At this point, I was super frustrated with my experience with the printer, especially again with the software side of things. So I sent off an email to Creality directly. I let them know about the issues with running the Mac build. I let them know about the issues with the uh, sliced files on the Windows build. I let them know about the pause function. And I also asked if they had plans to integrate this printer into Lychee Slicer or Chitubox, which I am a fan of both of them. While waiting for a response, I went ahead and imported the model into Chit2Box and did all the prep work in there. So I did the uh, scaling, the positioning, the hollowing, the uh, hole digging, the support generation. So I exported that completely finished STL, then dragged it back over into the Creality Box uh, slicer, just used that to slice, the so or slice that model, and then I plugged it back in and hit print. And Third time was the charm. Uh, with the Creality software having to do nothing but just slicing the file, the print did turn out awesome and the quality or the resolution that this printer was able to achieve was fantastic, but again, <laughs> It took a hell of a lot to get to this point. So Creality did actually respond within about 24 hours and they did send me an updated version of the software. It was just the Windows version, there was no Mac version and upon digging on the Facebook group for this printer, it seems like the Mac version actually does not exist as of now. Uh, they let me know that the Wi-Fi is currently only compatible with the Creality cloud uh, cloud software, which is an app for your phone. And they let me know that they are currently in talks. There's no compatibility or you can't slice it in Chitubox or Lychee, uh, but they are in talks with Lychee to enable this printer to be able to be used and sliced uh, and exported hopefully from within the Lychee slicer. And then regarding the bed and uh, the bed pausing and not going all the way up, I didn't really understand their explanation. They said to me that it had something to do with not wanting the part to be overexposed while printing, but I, 
I don't know again if it was something that was just misunderstood, but I've had every single resin printer pause and raise up to the top and never had an issue before. So I still think that whoever signed off on that, whoever thought that was a good idea, it's not. And it's definitely something that I hope that they patch in a future firmware upgrade. The updated software took me from what I didn't realize was alpha software to a beta software. And the beta software at least was able to do the supports where it didn't create that gap, making every single print fail. So I was able to start finally slicing files and printing them from within their slicer. Over on things, I found an account belonging to MZ4250 that had some awesome miniatures that I began to print out. I printed out a dragon model, an awesome goddess that had an insane crown of dragon heads, and Belafoss the Mad. It totally reminds me of a character from Lord of the Rings. These all turned out great, and I was very impressed that the whip on the end of his axe didn't break when I was removing the supports. The slicer still was very limiting, but I was at least happy to have successful prints now that we're looking great. The wash station continued to do a great job, and I do like that you have a ton of options for washing cure times as well as speeds for the rotation. I did leave the speeds on quick, which looked absolutely insane as the parts spun around, but each time they came out beautifully clean and cured. At this point, I had used up all the smoky black resin on my failures and my successes, so I cleaned out the vat and I filled it with Soriatex Creamy Fast Resin. So I did want to test out the Wi-Fi and I did go ahead and download the Creality app, which ended up being another disappointing experience. You should be able to click the pair button in the app and then go to the QR code that is displayed on the printer, scan the QR code and the two would pair with each other. But every time I did that, the app told me that the printer needed to be on the network and to check that. And I had confirmed on more than one occasion that this printer was indeed connected to my Wi-Fi network. And for whatever reason, the app was not able to connect to the printer. Looking at the instruction manual, it actually looked like you might need to buy Creality's $20 Creality Cloud box to be able to get it to work on this, which made no sense to me because there is built-in Wi-Fi. So once again, I headed over to the Creality Facebook group for this printer and discovered that the Creality Cloud, much like the Mac version, was a work in progress. Having resin in the vat that I wanted to use, I went ahead and printed out an Earth Elemental from MZ4250 as well, as well as a pea shooter that Chaos Core Tech had modeled from Plants vs. Zombies. I did notice that the hollow function was not working correctly in the Crowdy Slicer with the Plants vs. Zombie model, so I had to hop over to Chitu Box for that as well. This was my first time using the creamy resin, and it is a really good flesh tone resin. Both prints turned out great, and I was really happy with the end results and the quality that the machine was able to output. So. I like to consider myself a fairly positive person and definitely more of a glass half full type of person in the way I look at things, but there's really no way to sugarcoat how disappointing of an experience my uh, time has been with the Hallett One printer, especially with the software and kind of firmware side of things. Now, I've seen many times Joel telling the 3D printing nerd as well as Angus talk about what it's like to be a beta tester for a product and I don't think I ever really got to experience that until now. When Creality reached out to me about the Hallett One, there was absolutely zero mention that this was not a completed printer or that there were things that were still being finished or things that were in beta. And as of right now, you can go on Creality's website and actually pre-order this machine in the United States for $260, which to me, I just don't think is right. The printer hardware wise, with the exception of the bed that doesn't lift up when paused and the fans being a little bit louder than some of the other resin printers I've tested is actually quite solid. And I still stand by the fact that I love the five inch touchscreen on the front of this printer. And I think that it is one of the best that I've seen on a resin printer so far. But what good is solid hardware when the software gives you an experience like this? One of the pro features of this printer was the fact that it had Wi-Fi and I was really excited to be able to use that Wi-Fi. But as of right now, other than you being able to connect to Wi-Fi on the printer itself, you can't actually do anything with it. You can't send files from the slicer and you can't use the cloud software because it is still in development. My current recommended workflow for this printer is to take your model into Chitubox or the Leechy software, do all of your model preparation, export the STL, import it into the Creality software just to slice it up because they've got their own file formatting and then go ahead and print it, which just isn't something that you should have to do and is really a sort of tedious process in my mind. I do love many of Creality's products and have spoken very highly on a lot of them on this channel, but there is no denying that the Hallett One is a half-baked product at this point and it should not have been released yet. 
Is it possible that Creality can improve the firmware and can improve the software for this machine? Absolutely, and I hope that they do. I really hope that they do take some of the things in this video into consideration and the feedback I gave them over email, but there is no way in its current state that I'd feel right recommending the Hallett One as a printer when there are so many other options out there of similar printers that are much more dialed in or allow you to use things like Lychee or the Chitu Box Slicer natively, and it is just a much more positive experience. Being that this was my first interaction with a Creality Resin 3D printer, I had pretty high expectations and high hopes, and I was definitely let down with my experience using the Hallett One and Creality's proprietary software. I'm not a fan of any sort of proprietariness, and so the fact that there are such great slicers out there, but again, that they've released it, I at least am happy to hear they're working with Lychee Slicer, but again, as of now, you have to use those slicers and then import it into their slicer, and it's just an added step that I don't think is positive for anybody's workflow. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, I hate to be negative, but it's just, this is the reality and this is the experience that I had. If you do have any questions at all, um, please let me know in the comments down below. I am happy to answer them. And if you've got any questions you'd like compiled, I'm also happy to send those all back over to Creality to hopefully again, get them going in the right direction because I do really want them to be successful. And I hope that they are able to take these things and really improve upon the, the software side of things to get this machine into a better place. Don't forget to like and subscribe for great videos. We make a video every single week, so there is always fresh content coming your way. If you do want to support the channel, furthermore, I'll place links down below in the description over to my Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all my existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you guys allowing me to spend more time and come back each and every single week doing what I love, which is making content for you guys to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.